how to spend three perfect days in San Diego. In this video, we'll cover the top places you can visit in San Diego if you're only here for a few days. And for San Diegans, these ideas can help inspire a great weekend around the town. To put together this itinerary, we first listed the most essential places to visit, including iconic tourist attractions, theme parks, and the most beautiful places that you don't want to miss. We've organized them into a schedule where you can see the best of San Diego without having to rush between locations or travel too far. We've also included alternatives for each day to provide more options for solo travelers or for family travel. And feel free to rearrange any of these plans to better fit your needs. If I missed anything, leave your suggestions in the comments below for other travelers to enjoy. To begin day one, start at one of the most iconic and historic locations in San Diego, Balboa Park. At 1200 acres, it's one of the largest urban parks in the country, larger than New York's Central Park and San Francisco's Golden Gate Park. Just a few minutes away from downtown San Diego, it opened in 1915 as part of the Panama, California Exposition. The park is home to 16 museums, beautiful gardens, and attractions like the San Diego Zoo. A few popular museums include the Comic-Con Museum, San Diego Air and Space Museum, the Museum of Art, Natural History Museum, and much more. Spend the morning enjoying the museums and gardens and appreciate the Spanish colonial architecture that defines Balboa Park. For lunch, you can dine in the park at the relaxed Panama 66, or for an upscale dining experience, the Prado restaurant is highly recommended. If you enjoy learning about wildlife, you might prefer to spend the morning at the San Diego Zoo, which has one of the most diverse collections of wildlife, and it's often regarded as one of the best zoos in the world. After visiting Balboa Park, spend the afternoon nearby exploring a few of San Diego's most iconic beaches, Pacific Beach and Mission Beach. Pacific Beach is known for its laid-back beach atmosphere, the popular bars, restaurants, and a variety of attractions including the 3.2-mile-long boardwalk, which is great for jogging and bike riding. It's also known for the nightclubs, restaurants, and bars. Garnet Avenue is known for the interesting boutiques and shops and a farmer's market, which takes place between 2 and 7 p.m. on Tuesdays. Heading south on Mission Boulevard, you'll find Mission Beach. The area is known for Belmont Park and the iconic Giant Dipper roller coaster, which was built in 1925. It's a classic seaside amusement park with rides, arcade games, fast food, and one of the largest indoor pools in the United States called the Plunge. A great way to finish the afternoon is by watching the sunset along the boardwalk, or if you're in PB, try visiting Crystal Pier. If you're enjoying the video or learned something new so far, please hit the like button. And for more videos about Southern California, please consider subscribing. It really helps the channel. Now back to the video. To begin day two, we're going to drive 20 minutes north of downtown to one of the most visited beach communities in San Diego. La Jolla occupies about seven miles of rugged and sandy coastline, and it's known for the bluffs, the coves, sandy beaches, the expensive real estate, and the history which dates back thousands of years. Our first stop is La Jolla Cove, which is a rocky, picturesque cove with clear waters and an unmatched view of the Southern California coastline. During the summer, the cove is a great place for swimming, snorkeling, and even scuba diving just offshore. On the rocky point, you'll find hundreds of sea lions resting on the rocks. And the cove is a close walking distance to many popular attractions, including Scripps Park, which is perfect for picnics, the La Jolla Coast Walk Trail, which travels above the famous La Jolla Caves, and then there's Sunny Jim Sea Cave, which has a staircase leading down a tunnel to the water's surface. And there's downtown La Jolla known for shopping, boutiques, art galleries, and fine dining. A short walk south is the Children's Pool, which is known for its concrete seawall. This area has become a resting spot during the winter for seals and a great place to view them from above. When you're ready for lunch, La Jolla has many unique restaurants to choose from. Duke's offers fantastic ocean views and a Hawaiian-inspired menu. George's at the Cove is known for its modern California cuisine. There's local favorites like the Taco Stand, a casual spot for authentic Mexican tacos, and El Pescador Fish Market, which offers a variety of fresh seafood. In the afternoon, head to the Salk Institute, an architectural marvel and research center. It's known for the travertine courtyard divided by a narrow channel called the River of Life that appears to reach to the horizon. Take a walk and explore the beautiful architecture and ocean views. 
and you can visit the facility free of charge by signing up for an appointment on their website. Afterwards, stop by the Torrey Pines Glider Port just a few hundred feet down the road. The Glider Port has one of the most breathtaking views of the coast, sitting on a sandstone bluff nearly 400 feet above the beaches below. You'll often see paragliders traveling up and down the coast taking advantage of the sea winds. You can even schedule to fly with a trainer and experience the flight yourself. If you enjoy hiking, nearby is the Torrey Pines State Natural Reserve. The reserve is known for the beautiful seaside trails which lead from the bluffs to the beach. This is a wonderful place to enjoy some of the untouched nature of Southern California. As an alternative, if you're traveling with family, you might consider visiting La Jolla Shores, which is ideal for an afternoon of beach activity. The long sandy beach is a great place to take a walk, play beach volleyball, have a picnic at the park, and the waves are perfect for bodyboarding and surfing. And for an educational experience, just above the beach is the Birch Aquarium, a world-class aquarium with marine exhibits and an incredible variety of sea life. To end the day, enjoy a sunset at the beach or on the cliffs overlooking the Southern California coastline. On day three, start the morning by visiting Old Town San Diego. Old Town is considered the birthplace of California and it's the site of the first permanent European settlement on the West Coast. Old Town State Park has 32 historic sites with a mixture of shops, restaurants, and attractions. These include the Whaley House, which is also known as America's most haunted house. There's Washington Square Park, the town's historic center lined with sites and shops and historic buildings. There's Heritage Park, which is home to many Victorian era homes. And Presidio Park high above, where you'll find the Junipero Serra Museum. Old Town hosts annual celebrations including Cinco de Mayo and Dia de los Muertos. We have a full video of all the best things to do in Old Town and you can find the link in the description below. For lunch, try some authentic Mexican cuisine at restaurants like Cafe Coyote, known for its traditional Mexican food and lively atmosphere, or Old Town Mexican Cafe, a great spot for Mexican cuisine and handmade tortillas. In the afternoon, explore the best of Coronado and downtown San Diego by taking a short trip on the Coronado Ferry. Start by parking near the Coronado Ferry Landing. Here you can enjoy the seaside shops before taking the Coronado Ferry across the bay to the Convention Center Landing. This is also a great way to get to the Convention Center during events like Comic-Con. From there, you can walk north along the Embarcadero to Seaport Village. Seaport Village is a waterfront shopping and dining district in downtown San Diego. It has over 70 retail shops, galleries, and restaurants, and there's a wide range of things to do. It's a great place to buy souvenirs, grab some coffee, or dine at one of the waterfront restaurants. It's a family-friendly location, home to a historic carousel, and there's live music and performers here on the weekend. From there, continue north along the Embarcadero to explore Tuna Harbor, which has some great photo opportunities. It's home to statues and memorials, including the famous Unconditional Surrender statue. This is also where you'll find the USS Midway, a historic naval aircraft carrier museum, and the longest serving aircraft carrier of the 20th century. If you have a chance to explore the museum, they have a great audio guided tour. Afterward, walk another block north to the Broadway Pier and take the return trip back to the Coronado Ferry Landing. On the ride back, you'll have incredible views of the USS Midway, Seaport Village, and downtown San Diego. And after about a 15 minute ride, the boat will dock back in Coronado. While you're here, make sure to check out Centennial Park, which is a great photo opportunity and one of the best views of downtown San Diego. From here, a short drive west along Orange Avenue will take you through downtown Coronado to Coronado Beach and the Hotel Del Coronado. Coronado Beach is a 1.7 mile long, wide stretch of sandy beach. It's often voted as one of the most beautiful beaches in the United States. On the north end is a popular dog beach, and all along the shore are beautiful areas to set up beach chairs and enjoy a day near the water. Near the southern edge of Coronado Beach is the Hotel Del Coronado, a historic beachfront hotel built in 1888. Known for the Victorian era architecture, it's been a filming set for several movies. The hotel has hosted celebrity guests, presidents, and royalty. 
In my opinion, this is one of the most beautiful places in San Diego to enjoy the afternoon and watch the sunset. I recommend bringing a picnic lunch or takeout and enjoying it along the beach. For dinner, there are plenty of amazing restaurants in Coronado. I personally like the Sun Deck, which is a perfect spot for dinner with stunning ocean views. Finally, enjoy one of Coronado's beautiful sunsets to close out day three. We have full videos about all of the individual locations mentioned in this video, and we'll put them in the description below. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more to see. To learn more about the most beautiful places to visit in San Diego, click right here.